Hi everyone. Okay, so as always, I'm just gonna give a moment or two for people to start coming in. I hope everyone has had a fabulous week so far and a really good weekend. Okay, so I see people are starting to come in. Hi Joy, welcome to the live. Wait for a few more people. So I've been good. I'm very excited to have another week here with you guys. Hello, hello. So if this is your first time or if you've been here before, this is Hector at Home, the kids edition. My name is Lisa and I'm your host for today uh, and every other week. So what we like to do here is that every week we do an art project at home and we use a uh, a work of art from the museum's permanent collection as our inspiration for our project. Okay, so I see lots of people are coming in now. Hey Jazz, hi Alyssa. So good to see you guys. Hi Maggie. All right. So we have a brand new work of art for inspiration this week and I'm super excited to show you guys what it's going to be all about. So as always, I have my iPad with me, cannot do without it, and I'm going to show you guys what we'll be using uh, and what we'll be making observations about before we get to our art project. Sound good? Okay. So without further ado, we get a three, two, one. Ta -da! So please let me know if anybody has any issues looking at this whatsoever. Uh, this is really very vibrant and colorful and has lots of details going on with it. And like we do every week, I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to make your own observations and take a closer look. So when you guys are looking at this, when you're looking at the whole thing as an overview, what shape? is this work of art on the on the outside do you guys see what shape is the outside okay so joy said that she thinks it looks very pretty thank you i also agree with you so when we're looking at this this outer shape right here you notice i'll outline it with my finger here it kind of almost looks like a semicircle or an arch and the name of the artist who created this piece her name is Miriam Shapiro. Okay, very good. I see some other people adding that they agree that it looks like a semicircle. Very nice. Oh, and Maggie says that she says it looks like a rainbow shape. Fantastic. I definitely agree. It reminds me of a rainbow with all of those beautiful colors and that arch or that semicircle like we were mentioning as well. Uh, so what we what Miriam Shapiro has created here is a fan and it's a really gorgeous decorated fan and I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit so we can take a closer look okay so as we're looking here from side to side bottom to the top and we're going over inside of our fan shape do you guys notice any different kinds of uh, patterns maybe or designs that are familiar to you and I will go ahead and what kind of patterns do you guys notice and I'm using the word pattern and what we normally describe that as is when we're seeing shapes or colors getting repeated over and over again in some kind of an order so here we can see a lot of different patterns that Miriam Shapiro used inside of her fan. Can you guys tell me some of the patterns you guys notice? Okay, so Joy said that she sees waves. Fantastic. Love it. And we have some flowers, triangles, squares. Oh, wow, we got a lot. Okay, zigzags, X's. Okay, hi Peggy, welcome to the live. She says that she sees triangles, and Joy said that she sees stripes. Okay, so you guys really named a lot of them. And so Miriam Shapiro uses a lot of those geometric shapes. So when I say geometric shapes, I mean those triangles that you guys mentioned, uh, rectangles, squares, all of those shapes that have those sharp corners. Okay, so... Uh, she uses those to create all of those patterns that you guys mentioned here already. And this is actually also a collage. 
So a collage, for anybody that's not familiar, is when you take a lot of separate little things and you put them together to create a bigger picture. So it can also be, those little things can be made up of lots of different kinds of materials. It could be paper, it could be fabric, it could be string. If you guys see, we have flowers here. If you are the one creating this, maybe you can even add real flowers. Collage can mean lots of different things. So one thing that I wanted to tell you guys about Miriam Shapiro that I thought was really important was that she uh, really likes to honor different female artists through her artwork. And she did that by not only creating the collage, her collages like we're seeing here, but she liked to add a lot of feminine details. So when I say feminine details, that means things like hearts or flowers like we see a lot of here, or really those vibrant and warm uh, colors that we're seeing. So she actually created a new word to describe her artwork. And so she would take the word collage and the word feminine and she would combine them together to create a new word called femage. So she would consider her work of art a femage, which I think is really nice. And on that note, do you guys know what's coming up on Sunday? What special holiday is happening? Does anybody know it's coming up on Sunday? I'm really excited for it. I bet a lot of people are super excited about it. So this upcoming Sunday is -da -da, Mother's Day. And I thought it would be really nice for us not only to do a project based on what Miriam Shapiro has created, but also to kind of take a page out of her book and not only uh, make something for ourselves, but maybe we can make something and give it to either our moms or a really important person or woman in our life that has really made a difference. And I think it'd be a really nice way to create some kind of a meaningful gift. Oh, Jess said it's going to be her first Mother's Day. Congratulations. That's amazing. Awesome. So I'm going to show you guys what project we'll be doing together today. And hopefully you guys, we can you can follow along and create with me. So you might have already seen a picture of this, but if you haven't, I'm going to show you right now. Dun, dun. Ta-da! This is my version of my fan. It is fully functional. So whereas Miriam's, and I'll bring it up one more time, hers was more decorative and it lays flat on the wall, whereas what we're creating today is actually a functional fan made from paper. And if you guys actually notice on the inside of two of these panels, I actually decided to write a letter to my mom and I'm actually going to be giving this to her uh, when it comes on Sunday for Mother's Day so I hope she likes it and I'm going to show you guys exactly what steps I followed to be able to create this. Okay, so the first thing we need like every good art project is a piece of paper. And I'm going to show you guys all of the materials before we officially get started. So of course we need our paper. And then we need scissors. You all know how good I am at cutting. I think I'm getting better week after week. We will need a ruler, a pencil, a glue stick, or, and if you don't have a glue, glue stick, no worries. You can use liquid glue, you could use tape, uh, whatever you have lying around at home is totally fine. And then you are going to need coloring materials. I chose my markers this time. But of course, if you have colored pencils or crayons, um, pastels, chalk, whatever you feel comfortable using at home, you are free to use that. Okay. Oh, thank you. Somebody said my mom was lucky. I hope she likes it. Uh, and so we mentioned, I mentioned to you guys that Miriam has created a collage with her work of art. So for our collaging, I decided to use, ta-da, lots of different colored paper. So while colored paper is also a great choice, let's say if you don't have that at home, you can always take white paper that you do have and you can color it and make your own different colored paper. Or if you have stationary paper at home, uh, that would be a really fun way to make your project super different or you could take any pages out of magazines or newspapers and it'll create a super fun look for your project as well. Okay, so without further ado, 
let's get to it. So the first thing I we need to figure out is we need to plan each section of our fan. And to do that, I really just eyeballed it, but I used a straight edge like a ruler and a pencil to mark each area. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly do that for you guys now. So you really just does not have to be perfect. It's okay if one is slightly bigger or slightly smaller than the other. Um, you're really just marking it up so you know where to put your different patterns and designs. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like now. Ta-da! So you guys can see I did not get crazy about it. Just did it super quick in the three seconds that I just did it right now. Hi Lonnie, thank you so much for joining us, and hi Diane, love to see more people joining in. So for people who are coming in right now, we are doing a project based on Miriam Shapiro, which is this lovely piece here. Okay, so once you have made your sections for the different parts of your fan, you then are going to have to brainstorm what different kinds of patterns or designs you want to include. Now, I'm going to actually open my fan up to show you guys my different designs. Okay. So, as you guys can see, I opened it up here. And so I have my one panel where I wrote my letter. I have my collage ones where it's these triangles. And then in other parts, you can see where I went in by hand and I created my own pattern. So... You guys can see I actually only had two patterns that I stuck with and I alternated them between each section. And then of course I added in just the one with my letter here and then one with my letter here. And so they're still even. So then when I close it up, it still looks like my fan like this. So when you guys are picking your designs and your patterns, I want you to remember that you're going to pick two. So that's going to go one, two, one, two one two so it could be let's say hearts and then polka dots hearts and then polka dots or maybe you want uh rainbows and then zigzags rainbows and then zigzags whatever it is just make sure that you're alternating them per section so i actually went ahead and i started another one to show you guys the in progress and i wanted to also show everybody how you would be able to make those triangle shapes really easily like i did in my project here so to create these little triangles, um, you would need to take paper. So whether it's white paper or let's say you wanted to take color paper. And for fun, I will use color paper. So let's use yellow. So for this, all you need to do is you are going to cut out a strip of paper. And fairly thin, uh, the bigger your strip of paper, the bigger your triangle is going to come out. So, again, I'm just using my eyes. This, is, this does not have to be exact whatsoever. Alright, so once you have two strips of paper, I'm going to show you guys what they look like. So, if it's about this big, and then about this big, and then if you layer them on top of each other. And you may be asking yourself, Lisa, how did you get you, these two strips of paper to turn into these triangles? Well, let me show you. So what you're going to be doing is when you have your yellow paper, uh, hold it uh, sideways like this. You're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut diagonally from the corner. So when you do that, show you guys, when I cut from the edge, I got my triangle. So then you must be saying, Lisa, well, where do I go after I make that first cut? So you're then going to start moving your scissor from side to side and cut along the paper. So I'm going to show you guys really quick. So now if I switch the angle and I cut, there's another triangle. I'm going to switch my scissor again to the other side, cut, triangles. And I'm just going to keep going till I get to the end of my paper. And it's really great to layer it because you get double the triangles per cut. And last one. There you go. So once that is done, you would have a ton of triangles. There you go. So I have some pre-cut here just to uh, speed up the process a little bit. 
Okay. Hi, Lonnie. I do do projects every week for anybody new who's joining us this week. I do one every single Tuesday at 3 p.m. And if you've missed any of them, you can always go onto our website, Hexer.org, and we keep all of them there for uh, you to look back on as well. So once you have your uh, shapes cut out, whether you decide them to be rectangles, triangles like I did, circles, it is totally up to you. The fun part now comes in arranging everything uh, and really making your own and super unique. So I'm going to show you guys a new one that I did, show you what it looks like. So here you can see I changed the direction of my triangles and they're facing inwards now. And so it's the same here and then it's the same here, and then I came up with polka dots on this side, and it's the same here, and then it's the same there. And if you could see, I would continue on in that matter till I got to the end of my paper. So a suggestion that I would definitely make is that for your paper to be a bit uh, shorter on the vertical side, the long ways, and to be longer horizontally, and it will definitely make a much better fan for you. So let's say this whole thing was finished and filled up, no more white space, we covered everything. You then would start to fold your paper to really make it look like the fan that I created in my final one. Uh, so you would alternate by folding it inwards and then you would fold it or outwards and then inwards. And then you would continue on in that fashion until the whole thing was done and then it would look like this. Uh, so I will say, remember that if you decide to gift this to either your mom for Mother's Day or to a special woman in your life who has really made a difference, you can definitely include a message like I did. And this is going to be my letter for my mom with her gift. Uh, and it's like a nice little hidden secret message, I think. Or if that's not something you want to do, you could always do it on the back if you'd like. Uh, or you could just write a separate card and make this a gift. So uh, once you're done and you folded the entire thing, what you would do is you need to bind one bottom part down here. So what I actually did was I used a piece of tape to go ahead and securely fasten the bottom. And with that, there is our lovely fan. Uh, so a couple of other ways you can decide to get the bottom to stay closed like this is that you can pinch the bottom and then you could fold this part inwards and then tape it so it's really nice and sturdy. Or you can actually punch a hole through this bottom part and then you could put string. It would make it even more decorative and really nice and you can play with the different kinds of uh, string or yarn. Maybe you could add beads to the bottom if you have that at home. There's a lot of different ways to really customize this and make it super special and tailored to either if you're making it for yourself or you're going to be making it for somebody else. Okay, fantastic. So this was this week's project. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed joining me today and learning about Miriam Shapiro and figuring out how you could make your own project at home. Uh, I, if you do decide to do this, I would love to see what you guys have created. And if you do decide to give this to a, your mom or a special woman in your life, please take a selfie with them and your project and upload it to social media and tag us so we can see all the wonderful things that you have created. So again, I am here every Tuesday at 3 p.m. for Hextra at Home, the kids edition, and we have a new project every single week using materials that everyone has at their home. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Lisa. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and a great Mother's Day, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.